so guys just before we actually start the session i would like to tell you everyone that uh, we are going to uh, mute all of you uh, whenever you will try to unmute yourself uh, we'll basically try to mute it because we do not want to create any uh, you know disturbance for students uh, who are listening to this session whosoever has any doubt any question you guys can ask your doubt and by raising your hand and we will have a very separate uh, you know time where you guys can you know it, we will open the floor and everyone can ask their questions from from us and we will be happy to answer all the questions so now uh, to start the session for today so our ses today's session is uh, you know is going to have uh, the same format where first we are going to uh, you know disc uh, like hear from one of our student who has successfully gotten the job and he has started working uh, so he we will hear some uh, like his journey so that we can understand that what are the obstacles he faced and what did he do to overcome those obstacles and how is he feeling today you know when he has the job uh, and that to an IT very first time and after that we'll start our se session with AWS solution optimization so we'll understand that what are the factors we have to pay attention to to make sure yeah, that whatever you. solution we design that solution has all the best practices followed okay because uh, other day i went and uh, you know met few people and i was asking them that what is what is that question which is being asked in many of your interviews and we identified that this is the most asked question that how can you optimize your aws solution and that is why we thought this is going to be a very important topic for all our students or for people who are aspiring to become aws cloud engineer or cloud engineer uh, either you want to become multi cloud engineer azure cloud engineer cloud architect for any cloud related role irrespective of cloud whether it is azure google or aws you can still manage to you know follow these best practices which we will be discussing in today's session and i think that will really help you if you answer this question in your interview so that's why we brought this topic up and we will be sharing more details about it in a while so now let's proceed further uh, so we will be uh, so first of all i just want to uh, you know make sure that people who are joining very first time uh, in this webinar and they do not know what is think loudly so think loudly is actually our company where we call it as a single stop shop for all your interview needs we are working day and night on preparing the content which can be delivered to you in a simplified format and we help with various trainings resume assistance interview questions interview preparation sessions certifications and a lot many things we do to ensure that you become ready for your job and that's how we have been helping uh, from past number of years to our students who have, who have been associated with us and we are happy to do it when we see results we are the most happiest people like uh, you know we feel about you when you actually succeed so that is why uh, we invited our one of our students who got the job very recently uh, his name is polu sola uh, he has been associated with us for past few months and uh, to be honest he he had been a very good student who has always uh, you know uh, associated with us and he attended various courses with us and also he paid attention whether he is driving to his work or uh, he is not able to attend the session but he was very good at uh, you know working on his skills so i would like to give him uh, you know olusola the floor is for you uh, you can take 5 uh, to 6 minutes of your time and please uh, help our students with your journey so that they can learn from you and you can tell how are you feeling right now after having a job in it so floor is for you thank you yeah thank you naman uh good morning everybody uh my name is uh, odoyo michala 
Uh, actually, uh, I'm directly from Nigeria. And uh, the journey before now, I think I have uh, 10 years experience in banking. I never done LT before. Uh, I was doing banking way back in Nigeria. And when I got here and IT got to me, I've met, uh, I met several training people or training center. I've paid at least not three, four, five people. Even I had to train, I had to pay for an indigenous guy, you know, in Nigeria. So that probably that would be better and probably I would understand better. But then when you're in during the training, you want to ask questions. They are very key with your time. They tell you go and watch the video and all that. So I'm almost got discouraged. And I was thinking probably, this is not a paid advert, but this is just the reality uh, I'm, I'm saying out here. You know, it's a reality within my experience. Um, when I when I met with uh, Think Cloudly, I was not even, I didn't put my name, my head in the name because I had several disturbing me calling and all that. But you know, there's a person person think call following up with Think Cloudly. And we're like, Think Cloudly, Think Cloudly. And okay, and I said, okay, let me give it a try. I'm not ready to pay any money again. I told the person, I'm not ready to pay any money again. And the, the person told me, you can play, pay a uh, little by little. So then I was thinking I could play around with uh, some few dollars. I could play around with some few dollars. Then I, I decided to register. Actually, the person, the, the, the said person, name is Naman. <laughs> the same person we are talking to today. So it was just, just give it a try. You can see the difference. So we started the lecture with the AWS. And I, I used to work uh, with Amazon driver, I do Uber and all that. It's been like a, like a family, so, so far, so good. I've met with several, like I said. During when I met them, I, have, I, I, I put in for a job before now, two top, uh, there are two top IT companies from Israel and India. You know, of course, you know that Indian has it that uh, when I say company, they are not company that are just in America. They are, over, they are in over 50 countries of the world. So I put in an application with them. So I did the last interview with one, one of the company before I, I joined. And uh, at the final stage, I was dropped out. Of course, everything I know was abstract, like abstract to me, you know. Before I joined Thinkland, I was working with a guy in free school, whenever he wants to give me something, he said he's training me and he's paying me part time. But I discovered along the line he was just using me. All he has to do is send me a printout of what to do. Press this, type this, press this, type this. Then we were managing uh, using uh, uh, liners to manage some server virtually. So I would just type in, but I don't really know what this all this thing actually means. <laughs> I don't know that. But when I ask question, he tells me, don't worry, he's a Nigerian. But I discovered I was not actually learning. So when I would be I think loudly, I discovered that they were not actually just teaching because the first two lectures, I tried to go to my uh, lab work. I couldn't get it. I discovered that I could talk to somebody. I think the uh, Naman, Naman, you're in India, right? Yes. Hello? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I don't know how he does that. And you always have somebody to talk with. Even though I'm at night here, I live in Texas. And of course, Eastern time. But at, at any point in time, I press my phone to ask a question about my loud work. I discovered that somebody is there to answer me. So uh, that's really amazed me. You know, when you're working and you can't just ask in the class alone, but whenever you have problem, you can just, and you, the problem will be solved along the line. Then I begin to encourage that. Then I think this is where I'm going to learn this. It was very interesting. Even though I was working most of the time for my lecture, I'll be on the road uh, doing Uber. I put my uh, air, air phone. When I don't have a passenger, I put it on speaker. Then when I get home at evening, I try to go through the lecture then. 
my own time of attending to my lab work is always different. So most of the time I disturb. And they don't even see that as disturbance. They, they answer you right away. There's somebody out there to tell you at every point. So it made the whole thing easier for me. So I wasn't even feeling that most of the lectures I don't attend them live or because at every point in time, I have somebody that attend to me and I did all the lab work. During, before we finished AWS, was a final interview with this company I'm working with. So I put in for just uh, uh, tech support. That was what I put in for. So during the interview, the last interview, I was talking about something, some question actually took me to AWS and cloud, you know? And I'm still going to talk about that during the interview, what's, what we can do, but I want to talk about my own interview. Then I'll give you some highlights of what you should expect in an interview like that. So I may mention of that, and they begin to ask me, you know, those questions beginning to, I begin to see these lectures I have and my lab, you know, it's as good as the lab work I'm doing them right now. So every question that was asked about AWS and cloud, I was just giving it back. And they asked me, why have you not taken your AW exam? So I told them I'm going to take it. So I think I got a job and uh, they were supposed to take me as a cloud engineer. Every people that was taken as cloud engineer, were, were, they have AWS, but I don't have. So I was sent a, a, a separate letter stating that I should, have, I should have taken me for analysis, I mean, AWS. But they, they discovered I actually have the whole idea with me. So they give me some time, some few months to get my, make sure that I get my AWS. Then in that time, they're gonna take me in. And I started working on, on the, there's this department they call Digital Foundation, you know? So I'll start working with them. I was taking far beyond the tech support which I applied for. And they were just waiting for my AWS certification right now to be able to step me up uh, because that was my first tech job. I've never done any job with IT before in my life. And at the beginning, I was like, will I be able to cope? Because actually I've not gone to the full site. I've not gone to live site. I've not resumed to any office. So when we resume, it was all good. All I did was that I went back I have four projects which I register with. As I'm talking to you, I've not even finished the projects already. But the two I worked on, the migration I actually worked on, was one of the projects they were working on when I, when I resumed the job. They were not expecting me to do anything. But during the group meeting, I have some few uh, contributions due to the project work I was able to register with with uh, think w, uh, with think cloud and like but you said you have no uh, aws yet i say yes i said i'm going to get it soon so i'm working on it i just want to have some stuff sorry so so far so good i will talk a little bit about uh apart from the job i just told you the, the other company which i put in for that they didn't pick me up they got an advert which i put in for back and uh, I'm, pay, I'm that one is still pending for now because they called me back and uh, I was able to tell them. And the interview, the last person that interviewed me was like, but you were putting for tech before. In between two months, did you get your AWS? I said, no, I didn't have it. I didn't get it already. I'm still working on it, you know? And probably I've spent more than one, nine, one and a half years trying to get a tech, tech training to be able to get a tech job, but I was able to get a cloud engineer job. I think I joined, I think Cloudly, not three or four months ago. For me, it was short. A lot of things I know now. And the job, I was so happy that at the end of the day, it pays for me because I work at home, I work from home now. I still do my part-time job. I'm still learning. I'm still, I'm still doing some, we still do some lecture today with take either with, uh, Within Cloudly. So I'm still hoping to get some other certification with them. Uh, my motivation is, uh, 
you know, when you are almost getting stopped, that is when Nama will call you and ask you <laughs> during the lecture. That is when they will call you. And I think that is a custom with I think uh, think cloud. There will never be a dull moment. I don't think there will be anybody in the class. If you are like me, I don't normally speak in class, but you can't do that with Naman. He's gonna make you talk and uh, no matter what, even though you don't know that thing, they might even look so stupid. They still entertain you, I still want to go back, you know? That's the only place I do lecture that I can ask question, the same question three times, even though I don't understand. I can't ask again and the lecturer are willing to go back to you three times, even though your question is gonna cost them an extra class on that, but maybe seven weeks, seven weeks for the lecture. Maybe your own question is gonna cost them extra class. It's gonna be done. You are gonna do it. Even when I joined, they are three weeks already on, it took me extra class to be able to join. So lastly, I want to talk about what to, what a tip on a uh, tip on interview. Before now, I did some several interview which I've never got into the last stage. And once in a while, even during lecture, they usually talk about this interview. And I tried to register my CV was 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 reviewed, and they talk about the interview. One major thing which worked for me, which I advise, don't say what, you, don't don't mention a technical word you don't know. So I would say any technical word you actually know very well, you know very well, find a way to let it come out of the interview. So you have something to say, because those interviews, they have time, they have a specific time for you. So if you have something you know very well, Technically, that that thing you know, find a way to mention it. Of course, you can't just mention, but find something that is connected to that thing you know, and mention it, because for sure they're gonna ask you that thing. If you mention a technical word, most of the interview will ask you, "Do you know that thing? What is that thing?" So, one thing, that's one thing that actually worked for me. I mentioned things that I actually know very well. I find a way around to mention it because I know they're gonna ask me. So when they ask me, I nailed it and they know that I actually know that thing. And it took all the time away. It took all the time away. So that's one thing which I actually want to share with you guys. Then uh, lastly, my future plan, of course, I want to get my AWS. My, my actually dream is uh, to be a devil engineer. And of course, uh, with the last lecture, which I'm still expecting one more to be a development engineer from Clean, I think loudly. Uh, I'm not gonna stop because the lecture has made things so easy for me. I still have all my videos. I still have some assignment left to be done, which I know I'm owing, which I tied to my laptop that I'm gonna do. I've not even finished my project work already. The project gave it to me. I was giving four. I just did, uh, I'm still on two, I still have three to go. So it's very uh, great journey being uh, with Think Loudly and uh, I still expect more from them because I still want to, until I get to the very top. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. If you have a few questions, uh, I wouldn't mind to thank. Thank you so much, Olusola. Uh, you know, it really uh, helps, you know, the way you actually, you know, brought everything out and said to the entire, you know, forum. Uh, you know, they these people, you know, are aspiring the same like you, the way you were uh, when you were, you know, up, like few, like one month ago, I think when you got the job, everyone has the same feeling right now that whether when we come from a non-IT background, Will it be easy for us to get a job or not? And, uh, or will we get the job or not? But your presence make them, you know, feel confident that yes, they can also do it. And that motivation is very important to be persistent and consistent. So that's what, you know, we, we really, uh, you know, appreciate uh, 
the whole thing probably team appreciate the way you you know kept everything out and people were listening to you there will be many people who will be listening to this recording and they will feel motivated that if olu sola coming from a very different background can get the job it means we also have the potential to get the job and guys it is not just me who is there to support all our students it is the entire team the instructors who are associated with us will be available to you and in case someone is not available feel free to call us on our official number ping us on our official number reach out to administrators the whole uh, team will try your try our level best to help you sometimes our responses might get delayed because of the number of people we are trying to help so do not take it wrong make sure that we are just working on the request and we will certainly come back to you so that's the only request i have for, with everyone and as olu sola said never feel lost in your journey always see that there is someone with you when when i say someone it is think loudly or someone from think loudly will always be there to guide you to ensure that let's say imagine you have your interview after two days and you have you need some clarification feel free to send us some message maybe we will be able to clarify it so just just be okay and we will be there we'll try our best in case we miss to answer you or to to send a response you guys can send a reminder to us and we will be working on that so uh, but thank you solu sola for coming and you know expressing yourself it really helps uh, yeah so moving forward with our session guys so this session uh, we are going to discuss about the aws solution optimization that how will you optimize the solutions whenever interviewer ask you that what are the factors you look at when you would like to optimize a solution not every time you will be joining joining the organization to design the architecture you will you will be also joining the organization to improvise the architecture let's say that there is an organization and they already have the architecture in place now the team or your manager will not ask you to you know to create the whole architecture again because architecture is already there they have already designed the architecture and architecture is already there so they will not ask you to do it again but they will ask you to improvise this architecture when we say improvise now there are multiple factors we need to look at when we have to improvise the architecture and these factors are expected even in your interview that how will you improvise the architecture so your answer would be that when i am trying to improvise the existing architecture i will revisit on security i will revisit on reliability i will revisit performance efficiency whether my architecture or whether my proposed architecture is efficient or not by performance wise or by cost wise and operation operational excellence so i'll tell you the meaning of everything and make sure that when you go next time in the interview and interviewer is asking you what what are the factors you look at to improvise your solution you have to name all these five factors security reliability performance efficiency cost optimization and operational excellence when we say security now what happens that when you have your architecture in place and when you look at the architecture there are few things which you have to keep in mind whether there is the vpc or not virtual private cloud this helps to make sure that your vpc is correctly configured under vpc you have private subnet or and public subnet or not so you will basically when you look at the architecture and you will identify that whether vpc is when you will look at the so they will you will find the architecture diagram when you will look at the architecture diagram it, like architecture diagram will give you the entire information of existing solution architecture that how the how the aws solution infrastructure looks like so let's imagine that let me draw a very 
simple architecture over here. So over here we have EC2, which is nothing but your virtual machines. Okay. We have two EC2s and then we have one load balancer. Okay. We have one RDS, which is for database. And over here, again, we have one RDS. Now we have kept the uh, EC2s into public subnet and RDS we have kept into private subnet. Okay. Now what you will do, you will look at the architecture. This is the whole architecture. Okay. You will first look at from a security endpoint, you will first look at the VPC, whether you have the VPC or not. Okay. Yes. So this architecture has the VPC. Okay. So from a security endpoint, we, when we look at it, we will look at the VPC. After that, do we have the components of AWS? These are the components, right? These are the services. RDS is for database. EC2 is for virtual machine. Load balancer is for load balancer. Elastic load balancer is for load balancer, right? So we have to understand what is more important. Servers are important or data is important. You, you have to think logically. You might guess that in the entire world, data is now more important than your cash. So whatever cash you have in your in your wallet, maybe the data which you have, uh, you know, uh, like related to your passwords, related to your information, personal information, that is more important than the cash you have in wallet, because it might not affect you much. But if data is leaked, your password is leaked, maybe it can land you in a bigger trouble, right? So data needs to be protected first. So you will keep RDS because RDS is a database service. You will keep RDS into private subnet. You'll make sure that your RDS is in private subnet. That's how you will improvise the security. You will say, no, I cannot put it, put RDS into public subnet. It will be a security risk. So RDS should be part of private subnet. And, and the EC2 where the applications are running that I can keep in private to keep it secure. But if I, if I'm okay to uh, keep it in public, I can do that as well. So private subnets are very important and we have to look at it. After that, we have to make sure that firewalls are, I'm, I'm still on security. So you have to look at the firewalls. So when I say firewalls, you know, what does I mean by firewall? Firewall means that, you know, whatever infrastructure we have over here, let's say EC2, EC2 has a security group. I'm not sure if you guys know this, some of you who are the existing student, they might aware what is a security group and people who are joining us going forward, you will come to know very soon what is security group. Security group is the firewall for your server, which makes sure that your server is secure. So you will check whether security group are in proper shape or not, whether the rules inside security groups are uh, good or not. So you have to look at the firewalls. So there are two firewalls in AWS. One is the security group, as we discussed, and another one is NACL, NACL. So some people say is NACL, and some people call it as NACL. What does NACL stands for? Network Access Control List. So security group works at server level, which is EC2, and NACL, which is Network Access Control List that works at the uh, subnet level. So private subnet, public subnet, it works at subnet level. So it actually gives two layer of security. How? So basically what happens, first of all, there is a VPC. Inside VPC, you create a subnet and inside subnet, you keep your server. This is easy to. So you see that first of all, the request will come inside subnet. For that, we have NACL firewall. So this request has to cross NACL. Once it crosses NACL, then to enter into EC2, there is a security group layer, which will be the another firewall. Okay. So there are two firewalls, security group and NACL. So these are the very good points, which you can tell in your interview that if we want to improvise our architecture, we have to look at the security. And when we say security, there are multiple ways to secure our architecture by making sure we have a VP by making sure we have public and private subnets, by making sure we have firewalls like security group and NACL. Security group works at EC2 level and NACL works at subnet level, okay? Third, there are other things to improvise security, okay? So 
use of SSL certificate, okay, secure socket layer certificate. You can read about more, but it is actually helpful uh, for your websites. So I'm not sure how many of you have, have ever paid attention to. So the box symbol, let's say if I access on my Google Chrome, if I access google.com or any website I access over here, okay, uh, let's say, let me access this and you will find this lock symbol. This lock symbol is nothing but your says connection is secure. This is because of SSL certificate. SSL certificate is stand for secure socket layer. So if interviewer asks you, how are you going to secure your website? So you will say, I am going to use secure socket layer uh, certificate that will help me to make sure that all the connection, let's say, all the connection to my website are going to be highly secure. So that is why you will say SSL. This is the another way of secure, securing your all the requests. So let's imagine if on this EC2, if there is a website which is running, you can secure this website SSL. Okay. So you can imagine that there are numerous ways to secure your architecture. So from a certain point, these are the three primary ways you can answer them. After that, you have other services like CloudTrail. So you can use CloudTrail to secure it. And there are multiple other ways by which you can secure your AWS architecture. Coming to the reliability. Reliability is very important. You know why? Now let's imagine that there is a server, EC2 machine, you can say. EC2 is a server in AWS. For the people who are joining very first time, I again mention, I again want to mention this thing. EC2 is actually the server. It's nothing but a server. And server are primarily used to host the website. So you access facebook.com, you access netflix.com, you access thinkloudly.com, all the other websites. And these websites always run on a server. So our thinkloudly.com is also running on a server. So just like that, our website always run on a server and in AWS, the site, uh, sorry, the server is, uh, we can create servers with the help of EC2. So you can imagine this is an EC2 instance and on this, we are hosting a website. Okay. Now, when we talk about reliability, you know what happens? When let's imagine there are only 10 requests per day. So the server can handle the request. I mean, all the requests can be handled and your server will be healthy and it can take care of all these requests. Okay. Now let's imagine that there is only one single server with limited resources and you are sending 1 million requests. What will happen? Your server will, it will not be able to handle 1 million requests because of the limited resources, right? So that is, that is, that shows that your system is unreliable. Your system cannot be relied upon. So that why you have to make your server, uh, architecture reliable. How will you make your architecture reliable? You will make your architecture reliable by making sure that you have multiple servers in place. Okay. You have elastic load balancer, you have auto scaling group. So these are the services which you will be learning, or you might have learned that ELB basically has load balancer distributes the load. Okay. Auto scaling group. It basically helps to, you know, scale automatically. If in case uh, the number of requests goes to 1 million automatically it will add more servers to it so that 1 million requests can be handled so that's how you make your solution more reliable okay now after that the for, so first thing is that if you want to improvise your reliability you can use auto scaling group this will make sure if the number of requests increases it will increase the number of instances which means it will increase the capacity of it okay capacity of your solution so what does it mean? Let's imagine that, uh, you know, uh, there is, there is a hall. Okay. There is a hall. Uh, this is the mm, wedding hall. And in this wedding hall, only hundred people are allowed because it has a capacity of hundred people. And let's imagine you invited thousand guests, guests. So you cannot, your thousand guests cannot fit in hundred capacity wedding hall. That's not possible. And you have to fit all the thousands into hundred uh, into this wedding hall. How will you do it? You cannot do it. It means your wedding hall is unreliable. Now, what will you do? You will take another wedding hall, which is 
for thousand people, and this time you will be able to invite your thousand guests. So this is how you make you increase the capacity. So auto scaling group, this is the service used by AWS. This helps you to increase the capacity of your solution. Okay, so this is very important. Now, the first thing we understood that auto scaling group can can have can increase the reliability. There is one more risk to our solution. Okay, to our solution. Let's say our servers are in different regions of the world. Okay, or not in the different regions, but let's imagine that uh, they are in the one region right now. Uh, so let's imagine that there is a North Virginia. Uh, in North Virginia, your server EC2 machine is running and your website is running over here and you are sending all the requests to it. Uh, and when it scales up, you have another EC2 instance in North Virginia itself. So to manage the request, you have multiple servers created by auto scaling group. Now it is, it is a reliable solution. Why? Because auto scaling group is able to manage the request automatically. It is able to increase number of EC2 instances. If the number of requests increase, however, what if there is a natural calamity like hurricane, earthquake, or there is some attack and the complete data center goes down, everything is gone down. Your solution is not reliable at all. Why? Because one region got affected because of natural calamity, disaster, natural disaster, and your complete solution has gone. Your business is affected 100%. So that is why what we suggest, we suggest multi-AZ deployment. Multi-AZ deployment, what does it do? It makes sure that you are deploying your uh, EC2 in one availability zone. This is AZ1 and another EC2 in another availability zone. This helps, this helps to make sure that if one region or if one availability zone is affected, you still have other availability zone available. So to make your solution more reliable, you will, you will propose that my solution should be available in multiple zones. That is multi-AZ deployment. So if my solution is available in multi-zone, if one zone is affected, I have other zone to be taken care of which will take care of my customers who are sending the request. So this is very important that if you want to handle the reliability, you have to make sure that, uh, yeah, you have to make sure that uh, your solution is deployed in multiple availability zones. After that, we have something called this performance efficiency. Okay. When we say performance efficiency, it is very, very important, you know? So if you might have noticed, if I want to open uh, AWS, sorry, the amazon.com let's imagine i open amazon.com okay if i open amazon.com within no seconds it will basically open the whole website is open in front of me within within just a couple of seconds and even for some people it opens up within 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 one second of time that shows the performance that shows how good your application is right because if it doesn't take time up so quick, it means your application is high performing. Now this high performance depends on your solution, depends on your AWS solution. You know how, let's imagine that you are using EC2 machine to keep your website and RDS for database. So when people are accessing website, website is bringing the data from RDS because RDS is a database which keeps all the data. So it is sending all the requests to RDS. Let's say if I, if I am searching for my friend, uh, let's say if I'm searching for my friend, my friend information will be picked up from RDS and will be shown to me. Okay. So it will follow a route that my request to search a friend will go to my website. And then from this website, it will go to RDS and RDS will give my friends information. And finally I can see my friends information on my website. Okay. That's happens, right? When you access facebook.com and when you search your friend's name on the top, your friend's profile loads. It's because when you search your friend's information, the request goes to RDS. RDS is a database. It picks up the detail and show it on your screen. But now over here, if you search again, the same route will be followed, but you want to improvise this performance because it's a, it's a very uh, traditional way of, you know, showing the information or pick or dealing with the data. You can introduce elastic cache. 
okay to to improvise the performance you can use elastic cache now what will have that when you use elastic cache this will improvise your performance of your solution because your website will not search in the database uh, database again it will search in the cache and will respond so performance efficiency is certainly important because it will improvise the speed of your uh, you know speed of your whole system or whole solution so first one is use of elastic cache second one is that use of cloud front so now uh, another thing is the cloud front so if you want to improvise your performance of your solution then use the cloud front so, so over here uh, so how can we improvise our performance we can improvise our performance with the help of elastic cache and the cloud front so we can uh, whenever we want to improvise the performance make sure you take this name of cloud front and elastic cache okay after that we have uh, the uh, you know uh, like we okay we have the cost optimization so when we say cost optimization right increasing security increasing reliability and improvising on performance should not impact your cost a lot you know this that every project you know whether it's a project 1 project 2 okay just a second there's there are some okay uh, i'm sorry guys there was some background noise and i had to uh, you know just shut my door i'm sorry about that yeah so basically what we were discussing that security reliability and performance efficiency should not affect your cost okay so whenever you suggest anything let's say that you are suggesting elastic cache okay you are suggesting elastic cache to improvise the performance okay when you want to do this because that's what we discussed over here that to improvise perform performance we can suggest elastic cache or we can suggest uh, the you know cloud front but both solutions have cost implication whether we are working for project and we have to look at the project budget whether the project can afford those two improvise which we have suggested for performance improvisation whether our project can afford that or not so that is why we always should calculate that whichever like whatever solution we propose okay that solution should be uh, should not be very pricey it should not be expensive to the project and that that's what we should look at and how will you look at it you know every cloud engineer or the a uh, cloud architect he always uses uh, you know this thing let me show you there is something called as aws calculator aws uh, pricing calculator so this is something which you have to always use so whatever components you are using let's say you are having two ec2 instances one rds you can search your service over here and you can calculate the pricing so this will actually make you a very good cloud architect or cloud engineer because you are taking care of the cost as well now you can use hundred of services which aws offers but it is not possible for the project you know to pay whether whether it's a big organization but every project has some budget associated with it so it is not uh, very easy for everyone uh, or for every pro project to have every services in place 
so that's why make sure that your uh, you are always calculating the cost let's say that your solution has rds okay so rds is a database every solution will have rds certainly right so let, let's say that uh, because it's a database and you cannot even imagine any single application without database right so when you basically go and check the rds pricing so over here you can see that we have the rds pricing for sql server and we have the rds pricing for maybe aurora so i can type aurora over here okay uh, so we have it here and now if i click on configure it will tell me that if i use aurora okay uh, so it will cost me 189 usd per month okay now if i look at the rds for sql server which is the counterpart and if i see this it's pricing it is how much uh, let me just see it for a month just a second i have to select the smaller one yeah so if i select this one not this one i think one second so we have to see the size of the database as well so over here if you see the size so the size is db uh, large okay this one and it is costing me 189 but if i go back and check the same db pricing over here for aurora for sql server and i just paste it over here and see the pricing oh, we don't have it okay just a second if you have it this yeah so you can see that it, it is costing you much more than that 1512 okay maybe because we are not choosing the right uh, database node size that's why it is giving us more cost so you can do this you know you can do this comparison with this uh, uh, like with multiple services and you will suggest what is more cost uh, you know effective so you have to make sure that your solution whatever solution you suggest that is that has better cost okay and it, it should not be very pricey for a project operational excellence this is something which is very important guys w what does it mean that whenever your solution whenever your solution is created right at that point of time your solution is working there is a maintenance cost associated with it so you have to calculate the maintenance cost as well that how many uh, engineers you have to hire let's say that you have designed a very complex solution and you need four engineers okay to manage that and probably you can design a, a simple solution and that will require only two engineers to manage so the maintenance cost if you look at for four engineers or two engineers you will find that four engineers maintenance cost is much more than two engineers so that's why you should always look at the operational excellence that operation cost after once the solution is deployed and uh, once the uh, you know solution is out there uh, and you know you have started using you have to make sure that your solution should not have the cost implementing implication afterwards okay so these are the five factors you should look at security reliability performance efficiency uh, cost optimization and operational excellence okay so now we we need to look at the cost optimization a bit more detail we will not spend very good amount of time on this but i just want to make sure that you understand what is the process you know when we look at the cost optimization primarily guys there are two you know two optimizations which are uh, which can be asked in the interview one is the cost optimization and another one is the performance optimization so performance optimization we just as spoke like we you can plug elastic cache you can plug cloud front you can use cloud front service you can use elastic cache service to improvise your performance but over here when you look at the cost optimization there are few factors you have few sub factors i would say to look at okay now you can see for storage you have multiple services in aws for database you have multiple services for network you have multiple services for compute you have multiple services which one you are going to use when and whether you are going to uh, you know use like this one or this one or this one which one you are going to use that's matter that that is very important because aws has more than 150 plus services and you can use any service for anything let's say if you look at the database 
you can create the database using rds you can create the database using redshift you can create the database using elastic cache but elastic cache has the best performance but it is highly expensive elastic cache is highly expensive because it is in memory database whereas rds is the cheapest one so when you look at the cost optimization you have to map the cost optimization with the performance optimization so that your performance is good and your cost is not very high okay so first of all you have to do right sizing what is the meaning of right sizing see your your organization when you are designing an architecture at that time your organization will say will give you the requirements first of all you have to make sure that you are going to you know you know you are you are going to make sure that you are not giving a lot of resources up front let's say you are trying to create a basic architecture and you say that i need six ec2 instances but the problem is you can say that you need 10 ec2 instances 20 ec2 instances but it is not the right sizing the way to do right sizing is that you will start with minimum number of ec2 instances maybe one or two and you will monitor you will actually monitor the performance of your solution if you think that one or two ec2 instances are not fulfilling the requirement then you can plug more that is known as right sizing right sizing means that you do the measurement before you actually propose anything so you have to start your solution with bare minimum whatever is actually required you will tell and if you really want to increase you will increase based on the performance of current uh, solution so i remember we were working on think cloudly's uh, portal so where you guys watch recorded sessions right over there we were actually working on the solution architecture of think cloudly at that time what we did so we actually followed the best practice of right sizing what we did we actually kept one server first with 2 gb of ram this was the sizing we did initially that okay number of users are less so now right now keep let's keep 2 gb of ram and uh, you know we started receiving visitors so all all of you all the students uh, with us they are the visitors to us so what we did we found that our servers was starting you know started crashing down and this server was not reliable it was not able to take the 100 of request every day then we identified no 2 gb will not work we need one more server of 2 gb and it might be able to take the number of request so what we did we proposed the basic bare minimum first we observed the performance of it and then we proposed that okay one server is not helping us let's put another one if there will be two servers they, they will be able to take the request that is what, that is how you do the pricing so if you if you look at this solution so you basically always keep on monitoring over here you you do performance review and monitoring dashboard you create that and you look at your resources how are they performing and that's how you do the right sizing you have to make sure that you're not proposing anything which is not making sense if you do it at that point of time itself you will lose in the interview so when you go in the interview you have to start from very basic minimum and you 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 need not to propose everything very expensive let's say you will in, in initial stage only you will say elastic cache but elastic cache is expensive is it really important to propose elastic cache no increased elasticity so we have to make sure that our solution has the use we are using the auto scaling group the auto scaling group over here when we use auto scaling group it will take care of the elasticity automatically i mean whether to use one server whether to use two servers whether to use three servers it will take care of the elasticity automatically choosing the rise right pricing model so i just showed you something over here that when you when you are configuring let's say rds and there are multiple options you have to choose from this class db class so over here if you look at you have like so many options okay you can choose any one of them but it will impact your pricing so you have to choose the right model whether you have you will go with 1024 gb because it's it's a, it's a lot it's actually 1 t terabyte of uh you know it will be too 
expensive. See, it is eight thousand eight hundred six, which is very expensive every month. But you might not need it. You you might need the cheaper one. So you will select something like this, the four GB one or two GB one. It is just twenty nine dollars per month. So you have to make sure that whenever you are choosing some resources, you have to choose the class accordingly. So uh, in your EC two, you might be studying um, EC two. In EC two, there are multiple things. So you have uh, you know your reserved EC two instance, on demand, spot instance, uh, dedicated instance. So spot instances is one of the very cheapest one. Okay, but but it has some disadvantages also. So if if you can use spot instances, go with spot instances. It will help you to save ninety percent of your cost. So this is what is known as choose the right pricing model. That whether it is going to help you or not. And there is another pricing model also, which is like reserved in reserved. You have to pay everything upfront. Like let's say for next three years, you will pay upfront in reserved case. But in on demand, you will pay every month based on the usage. So that's what you do in the pricing model. You have to make sure when you are choosing the pricing model, it does not have lot of cost implication, and it has, uh, you know, it has normal usage of your resources, which is the best, uh, and which is not impacting the performance of your solution. So you have to go for a medium solution. That's that would I suggest you, matching the demand. The same thing, having like number of servers. Uh, At the same time, like six, seven servers, it it doesn't help. What you have to keep the resources based on the demand. Otherwise, some of your resources will sit idle, and that's not good for your business. Let's imagine if I buy five laptops, I I may afford five laptops, but is it is it a good thing to have five laptops? No. I sh- if if my work can be done with one laptop, it's okay. i don't need five laptops so that's what you have to do over here as well so you have to keep only those servers which are required those number of servers which are required for your solution do not keep you know unlimited servers which which are not even required and which will sit idle like right, okay and and always depend on measuring and monitoring so being and being a cloud engineer or cloud architect you have to always look at the the pricing it is costing you every month so we always look at think loudly when we are running our servers our own servers on ec2 we always look at the pricing and we always look at the performance we always look at the whether we need two servers or not maybe this month we don't need two servers we need only one server or maybe this is a month of uh, you know december where a lot of people are coming to study with us so we need maybe five servers so we do this measuring and then and we do monitoring and on that basis we take the seasons like what are the number of resources we need whether we have to increase the number of resources or whether we have to decrease the number of resources i i'm sure that you will uh, you will say that go with auto scaling group it will manage it automatically that's the one solution to it but auto scaling group works only in case of ec2 what about what but there are maybe 149 services more so that's where you have to do measuring and monitoring okay so auto scaling group works only in the case of ec2 and and all others let's say uh, like all other services like rds like s3 rds load balancer route 53 all these services they don't work at they don't work on auto scaling group so auto scaling group works only and only with ec2 so that's why you have to check the you have to measure the demand and you have to monitor these resources other resources as well so that it doesn't cost you much can you imagine that uh, netflix if netflix is having 60000 servers okay so it's a very big work with them that they have to make sure that if 60000 servers are required for their application only then you will use 60000 server otherwise you don't need those 60000 servers okay okay last thing which i want to tell you real quick i know we uh, we are already done with the session but i just want to quickly tell you about this that storage s3 optimization is also a very popular question asked in the interview that s3 comes with multiple you know multiple types these are the types which are listed over here s3 standard s3 standard ia s3 one zone ia s3 glacier s3 
glacier deep archive so they may ask you these are called as s storage s3 classes these are the s3 classes you know what i was talking to my uh, one of my chartered accountant other day um, and we were talking to him and we identified that he is from finance and even he is using s3 so whenever i talk to many different organizations and companies i identify whether they are in it or not but they are using s3 s3 is one of the oldest and popular service of amazon web services okay and it has classes it has different classes over here okay so i tell you that this one s3 standard is something which is used a lot okay and there are differences there is a difference between s3 standard ia and all these so standard is like having uh, like a very good performance like if you can uh, you know keep your files in this it you can quickly access it so you keep all the files in s3 standard which are frequently accessed okay and all these other like glacier and glacier deep drive you use these classes s3 classes when you use uh, when you want to store some files which you don't access uh, you know which you don't access frequently these files are accessed infrequently so imagine that there are some uh, some files or some old photos which you do not want to access and you access it maybe once in a year or maybe maybe uh, you know once in 5 years you can keep those photos not in s3 standard you can keep it in these classes what will happen this has a very low co low cost as compared to s3 standard so what happens um, th th these classes are very helpful uh, you know uh, you keep only those files in these classes which are infrequently accessed and uh, what is the difference between if i say on all five classes s3 standard these are in multiple availability zone okay um and this is also in ia is also in multiple zones but there is like some of there is a very little difference of that you keep active data inside s3 standard which means the data which you frequently access uh which you less frequently access maybe inactive data you keep it over here okay then there is something called as one zone so what happens s3 remains into into multiple zones as i said reliability that that you keep your data into multiple zones so if one zone is affected other zone is there but some of the data you are okay to lose so you can use one zone ia over here you will save some money okay you will save some money and you can keep data over here but it will be in one zone if this one availability zone is affected your data will be lost that is the risk associated with this it will cost you less it has only one availability zone so it will cost you less but it has risk associated with it okay so these are the different classes you can read more about it i'm not spending very good time over here but the idea over here is the best is s3 standard and s3 glacier deep deep archive so in your interview if interviewer says that there are some log files which are accessed uh once in a year which one will you recommend so you will say we can go with s3 glacier or s3 glacier deep deep archive so that will help us to make sure that you know our uh, we are not paying a lot of money for the files which we don't access frequently so you can suggest these one if your interviewer says that are you like we are okay to lose the files but we want them to be you know frequently accessed so you will suggest s3 one zone ia so you say okay there's a risk associated with it i am okay to lose these files but i'll pay uh, i want these files to be you know frequently accessed so this is how you have to basically you know answer and to be honest you know you save a lot of money over here so there is a very good good amount of difference between s3 standard and s3 glacier deep dive uh, you save a lot of money over here and uh, you lose a lot of money over here so you have to make sure the files which are infrequently accessed you are keeping in s3 glacier drive and the files which are frequently accessed you are keeping in s3 standard okay so that's it guys from our session i'll just quickly tell you about our services product and services we have with us uh, a very quick before you guys leave uh, you just want to quickly go over these services so we offer multiple courses aws azure devops google cloud scrum master service now we have we have released one new course that is on uh, 
or that is a program that is on AI and data science. If any one of you or if any one of your friend is interested, please let us know that that is our humble request from every one of you that if you have anyone who is interested, please refer your friend. Uh, that will really help us and that will help you as well because we are we always run the referral bonus offer. You guys can avail that offer and that will really help you. So we offer all these courses, AI, DevOps, Azure, AWS, Scrum Master Service Now. We also help with live projects. So in the starting, um, Olu Sola was mentioning about the live projects that he went through data migration. And when he joined the organization, he found that they are doing the migration. So they could he could able to talk to the entire team about the migration because he could he he did his live project on data migration already. So if any one of you who who has not signed up yet for live projects, it is the personal recommendation that you go for live projects. We have live projects on Azure, we have live projects on AWS, we have case studies on Scrum Master Service Now uh, project management. We have a lot of case studies. If any one of you needs some certification assistance, do let us know. We provide some terms so that you your chances of passing the certification will become high. Uh, we also help with your resume. So we'll, we have a content team with us. They work on the resume. They make sure that your resume looks good to recruiters and you get a lot of calls because the main intention of resume is to get calls. So we make sure that your resume, we will prepare your resume and it looks good to the interviewer. And we also help with interview preparation sessions. So if you have your interview after two or three days, do let us know. We will help you to prepare your interview. When you go in the interview, you will be more confident to answer them. And then if you if you have already uh, got the job and you need some job on job support, do, a, do let us know. We have some engineers who can help you to make sure that you, you know, you are working well in your job and you're able to sustain your job for a longer run. Okay, this is the time for question and answers, guys. Uh, so if anyone would like to uh, you know, ask any question, uh, please let me know so that I can answer you. Any question on cost optimization, anything which you want to ask. Destiny, please go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna ask you a question on uh, what you talked about um, when you started working on Think Cloudly. From the beginning, you had one server and that was two gigs of RAM. And then you move to two. So my question is, what at what point did you make the decision to have to scale horizontally? Is why didn't you think of scaling vertically? So, so that point, what made you make that difference? Uh, okay, so Destiny, that is something a decision. Um, like first of all, we uh, we we decided to go horizontally. Okay, at that moment we decided to go horizontally because we we thought that having horizontal will help us because if one server goes down, we still have another server running. So horizontal is certainly better than vert vertical, but if you still want to maintain only one server, you do not need to have the overhead of elastic load balancer. Then we recommend to go with the vertical load balancer, uh, sorry, uh, vertical scaling, which is like increasing the size of existing virtual machine instead of having number of virtual machines. So that's why uh, we initially went for horizontal, but right now we have we are on vertical because we do not want the overhead of elastic load balancer. So that's the decision you will be taking uh, your own, depending if you want to use load balancer or not. Does that make sense? Sure, that, that's fine. Thank you. And 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 also having one server increases the single point of failure. Because if your one server is failed, because you're vertically increasing it, and if one server is damaged, your complete application will go down. So make sure that we always recommend to go with horizontal scaling, but it depends on your team and your decision which you take. No decision is wrong when you are you know, architecting a, or de designing a solution. Yeah, anyone else uh, has any question which we can answer or which I can answer here? No question so far. Everyone is good. So we have a question in the chat box. If you can have a look. Okay, let me just take a look. Oh, okay. We have a good question. So Femi is asking. So there is a scenario I noticed yesterday with the Mega Millions Lottery website because it was close to the period when they announced the result of the lottery. There was a massive crash on the website due to heavy traffic. 
what i know now notice was shortly a new page showed and said everybody trying to access a website to wait time to have access to website mine was 1 minute please how could this be remedied as remedied as a solution architect okay see what happens uh, uh, semi it's a very good question you are asking so what uh, let me tell you guys what happened with semi yesterday so femi was accessing one of the website yesterday it was a mega million lottery website okay and what happened that uh, when the result was about to announce uh, there were a lot of people who were trying to access this and it, this server was crashed okay so what happened that they they were actually using some servers maybe one server maybe they were using multiple servers and that they went out of the capacity so what happened that when they started receiving a lot of requests uh, the capacity of, of server was not able to handle and the server all the server crashed and for everyone the the, the website was down and that happens you know very oftenly uh, with a lot of websites so now to remedy uh, to or to fix this solution right what we have to do is as a solution architect first of all we have to predict we have to think about it that at the time of result there are high chances that the number of people are going to be who are going to visit the website are going to be very high so we will set up the auto scaling group and we will set the maximum limit okay maximum limit maybe to 200 or whatever maximum limit we can give we will give that now what will happen if at that point of time only during result time we will set this maximum we will increase the maximum limit so if the number of users will be more auto scaling group will automatically keep on adding the servers okay to manage all the rush and it will go up to the maximum limit and maximum limit you are setting 100 or 1000 maybe which is which is a lot okay so and after your result is announced and you see the traffic now is less uh, it's not uh, it's not 1 million it's like 100 users or 200 users you will again decrease this maximum limit to maybe 10 so what will happen that because of this you will be able to manage that period of time so you have to always remember that as a business or as a solution architect you have you have to always look at it that okay there is a uh, there is a deal we have announced there is a offer we have announced and we are we are expecting lot of people to visit our website during that period of time at that point of time we will make sure that our capacity increases uh, indefinitely and it doesn't create any trouble so that's how femi you you will be doing you will be handling the situation where maximum limit you will extend to 1000 um, of auto scaling group i hope that makes sense yes thanks yeah makes a lot sir okay awesome anyone else but femi it's a real a real question you asked thank you for bringing this question up it might enlighten other people as well anyone else who are interested to ask any question before we move on okay no problem guys uh, i hope you liked the session please refer your friend this is the really humble request this is the only thing which you can do for us by referring people and you can make money out of it okay and uh, i really uh, you know thank yeah 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 so akin tayo is saying that maybe you will able to chip in the use of elb uh, absolutely uh, akin tayo like whenever there are multiple servers which are involved right auto scaling group you need one elb definitely so basically what happened all these requests will be sent to elb and these requests will be you know transported by the elb to different servers so elb is must if you are using auto scaling group elb is must Okay. Does that make sense? Second time. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Akinda. Okay. Thanks everyone for coming and meeting us today. I hope you liked today's session. Uh, we tried our best to make sure that you know we deliver the session effectively. Uh, let us know your feedback on these sessions. Uh, when and you will be receiving the recording as well as the uh, presentation. and we will be uploading these recordings on our youtube channel so that you can subscribe to our youtube channel uh, that is with think loudly and you can attend all the previous webinars which we had 
uh, where we discuss a uh, very good things about interview and interview preparation sessions so you can always look at it so this session as well we will be uploading on youtube so make sure you are attended and you watch it and you send it to your friends and don't forget to refer your friends and thanks a lot for coming to the session i really appreciate it thank you everyone for coming thank you